Here we're going to look at building some tavern tables for our magnetic tavern tiles. We're going to be using dollar store foam core with the easy to peel paper. First thing we're going to do is cut some one inch by one and a half inch rectangles and some one inch squares. We'll peel the paper off the sides of these. Next, we're going to cut some 7 16 or 7 8 inch wide strips and peel the paper off of these. And we're going to cut them down into little 3 quarter inch chunks and quarter inch chunks. Now we're going to texture the top of the tables to mimic wood. So using my square here, I'm going to use my ballpoint pen and mark off quarter inch increments along the long side of, or along the short side of the table so that I can have long planks on the table. And then here I'm using the side of the ruler to score lightly into the tops of the tables. The foam is going to accept the score. Don't cut all the way through. Don't cut through to the paper. Just lightly score them. And then we're going to chase those scores with a ballpoint pen to deepen the grooves and to chamfer the edges a little bit. And then we're going to use a mechanical pencil and texture the top of the foam to resemble wood grain. It doesn't have to be perfect, but a little bit of extra texturing is going to pay off in the end when we do the painting. So taking the time to do this is a good idea. Do the ends, continue the planks down the edge, A little bit of texture in the end foam. And a little bit of texture on the side. It's going to let it pop on the table and stand out as wooden. Definitely feels wooden after it's painted up. And now that they're all textured, I'm going to glue trestles for the longer rectangular tables. Just little eight shapes, looks like an I-beam from the top. One little dot of hot glue to hold them together. And I'm using my mat to make sure that they sit flat on the table. Another little dot of glue. Using the mat to make sure it's sitting nice and flat. And there's a little trestle. And I'm going to make little cross shapes for the square tables. Little dot of glue. Using the mat to make sure the pieces sit flat. Little dot of glue. And we have a little plus sign or cross shape trestle for the square table. And just keep going. You can make as many or as few of these as you like. Nice and simple. A little dot of glue. Make sure it's sitting nice and flat. Pardon my hair. Pardon the strings. That's one of the problems with hot glue, but it bonds nice and quick. So I chose it over PVA or other fasteners. And one more little cross shape for the square table. Dot of glue. Make sure it sits flat. Oh, I didn't get there quite fast enough. I'm gonna try it again. One more dot of glue. And some strings. And another dot of glue. Make sure it sits nice and flat. There we go. And just keep going until you have them all made. Now we're going to glue them onto the back of the table. You will note here that I textured the sides and the top of the tabletop, but I did not texture the trestles and I did not texture the bottom of the table. I don't consider that a problem because 
well, we're not going to see them very closely, and they're so small that that amount of detail just kind of fades into the shadows when you're moving your minis around. Here I am just taking a little bit of time to deal with the strings. Top of the table, flip it over. Make sure the texture is sized down. And just a little hot glue. I know, there will be more strings. That's just the rule of hot glue. If you glue it, there will be strings. I considered the payoff of instant bonding to be worth the pain of dealing with the strings a little bit later. And we're just going to take our time and make sure we've got them lined up centered and the grain side down. A couple little dabs. A little dab will do you. Scrape off any excess. Just to make sure it's nice and clean underneath there. And we'll do some more. And keep going. Flip it over. Dabs of glue. Center it as best you can. I just eyeball these because they're tiny and it doesn't really matter. I mean, close is good enough. I like to choose the uh, smoothest side to go against the table and then I can trim if necessary, but these are pretty good using the cutting mat to make sure that they line flat when they're glued together helps a lot. Just a few more to go. Part of my hair and my glasses. Making good progress here. Have this tavern furnished in no time. Or maybe it's an inn. Or maybe it's an ahistorical both. The versatility of these little tables is that you can use them for pretty much any dungeon furnishing. Just toss a bunch out, scatter terrain. In a future video, we'll look at dressing up the tables. Almost there. One more to go. And there we go. All assembled. And now we're going to paint them with a wood look of our choice. And my standard is to base coat them all with kind of a medium dark brown. This is a largish jar of acrylic craft paint in a color called Coffee Bean. I'm just going to liberally coat all but the bottom surfaces of these little tables. Tabletops, table sides, trestles. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be 95 plus percent coverage. Don't want any white showing through. Unfortunately, I didn't get the footage of my dry brushing these afterwards, but in the next step, when we coat them with Mod Podge to protect them, you'll see that they have been liberally dry brushed with a lighter tan color called Camel, which brings out the wood grain look. And then I've further lightly dry brushed with a little bit of that camel color mixed with some bright orange in kind of random splashes across the top. And I like to do that because it mimics the appearance of lantern light or candle light or flame glow from a nearby fireplace, that sort of thing. And it breaks up the flatness of the colors, adding a little bit of visual interest for the players and for the 
dungeon master or game master. Just keep brushing this on. Got a little on my fingers. You can wear a glove if you like. I didn't bother for these. It's acrylic paint, so it's not really toxic. Might dry out your skin a little bit, but not too worried about that. You can actually wet down the paint a little bit and it will flow into those corners and into the texturing a little bit better. This jar is about a third used and I only use it on re reasonably small craft projects like this. So it's getting a little bit old and sometimes a little bit of lubricant water in the mix makes it flow a little better. Throw on some tunes, put on a movie, talk to your pets or your loved ones. Just slap on the paint. Pull off any strings. That was a conscious choice. I chose hot glue. I knew there would be strings. I like the acrylic craft paint because it dries reasonably fast. see the uh, herringbone wood grain texture coming out a little bit there as I start the brushing process and then the end grains inside. Again I didn't texture the trestles because they're small and ultimately in shadow a lot of the time. If you want to texture the trestles and the legs, go right ahead. A little bit of a uh, little bit of grooving with a mechanical pencil brings out kind of a faux wood grain nicely. There's that herringbone pattern showing up again. Looking good as DM Scotty would say. I added some paint to my old napkin at the side there and I add some water to it to add it little bit of extra flow towards the end here. My brush is getting a little gummy. Paint's a little bit old. There's some water. Just speeds it up a little bit. I don't have to scrub the brush quite as hard. It's just a dollar store craft brush so I'm not too worried about it but you know every little bit of help I'll take. Oh, more strings. A few more to go. And once again, I apologize, we missed the dry brushing with the lighter tan camel color. And then the highlight with a little bit of orangey tan color to mimic the lantern firelight glow from within the tavern. But in the next step, when I start coating these with Mod Podge to protect them, you'll see the finished results and they look quite good. And I find that a uh, little warm water with some soap afterwards and the excess paint on my fingers washes right away. Last one. So 
these 10 tables plus the two prototypes that I made to start will allow me to have 12 or so tables in any inn or tavern that I construct with my magnetic tavern tiles or my ma magnetic inn tiles. And here we're coating them with Mod Podge and in the background there you can see that they have been dry brushed with a tan and you can just make out a touch of that orangey glow color that I added for interest. I always like to take the extra step and coat them with matte finish Mod Podge because that'll keep them from getting scratched up or chipped and it makes the foam a little more durable and more able to weather the on table and storage wear and tear. This way I can just chuck them in a drawer or a box and not worry about them getting beat up. Might have to take two sessions to do this. Here I'm just doing the tops and then I'll come back afterwards and I'll hit the trestles and the bases. And then they'll be fully protected and I can just chuck them into a box or a drawer. Pull them out whenever I need them. Anywhere there's a table, I now have enough. Little dabble do you. You could probably get away with just using straight up PVA and you might even be able to water it down a little bit to make it stretch. I happen to have the Mod Podge on hand and I do like it. See a little bit of overspray from some spray painting I did earlier on my forearm there. I wore a glove, but I got my arm. It's pretty windy out. Note to self, save spray painting for less windy days. I'm not being too careful here. I'm not being too precise. I don't have to cover every single micrometer with Mod Podge. Sometimes I don't worry about it if it doesn't get all the way down in all the crevices but the top of the table will be a little bit flatter and a little bit more stable because of this coating. And since I took the time to put these together, it took about an afternoon to do all these tables start to finish. That's the beauty of the acrylic craft paints drying so fast. And the Mod Podge is not too bad either. Maybe one full day. Full day of elapsed time. I don't count the dry time. Thanks for joining.